this little area right here, that used to be a down slope. It's raised at least 10 feet of the water level. Look at this. This right here used to be all parked. Now it's all flooded. Look at how fast that water is going. The other side is flooded as well. Hi and welcome everyone, Fire Tuck here. This is my epoch, this is this week's uh, hobo tutorial. And what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be giving you some random advice. Uh, so just to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up, what you just saw was uh, the aftermath of all this rain from the uh, uh, in the Ohio River and just kind of how fast it's going and stuff like that. But um, anyways, so my first piece of random advice is this, is that you should always do transitions slowly, okay? Uh, part of the reason why you do this, and I actually learned this in the IT field, is the reason why you wanna do it slowly is because that way as problems and obstacles arise, you can take time to be able to, you know, uh, adjust to them so that you know how to uh, uh, how to maneuver in this, in this new transition that you're making, okay? So you wanna be able to have time for trial and error and for things to go wrong and time to be able to fix it. But instead of just jumping both feet in, um, that is something that uh, that I, I learned and I still do. So for example, uh, now that I've got this website going and things like that, I'm going to start looking at doing a transition away from Patreon uh, into into the actual website itself. That way, um, one, I get to keep more of the money and two, uh, it gives me a lot more control over my content. But in order to do that, I can't just sit there and say, hey, everybody, we're going over here because you know things are things are transitioning. So, you know, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight. It's gonna be something that happens like uh, over two or three or four months. It's not, you know, cause what I plan on doing is, and this is part of, you know, transitioning slowly is, you know, taking a couple people over at a time, posting content on both sides, um, and then bringing a couple people over at a, at a time and you know, have giving them a, a couple of months free membership just to be able to accommodate for the transition. Okay, so you know things like this. It's, if I were to do it all at once, man, I, I, financially for two months I wouldn't get paid. Whereas you know I can do it incrementally and take a small chunk each month instead of you know doing something large. So uh, whenever you whenever you're making a pivot or you're making a change or you know you're you're growing in some form or fashion, Fashion, you know, make sure to take your time and make sure to keep it slow. The second piece of random advice I would give you um, is, that especially if you get a hustle on, uh, is to be able to take time for yourself. Take a day off, uh, like today, Sunday, uh, as much as I wanted to go get on a computer and start doing some work because, you know, one, I'm a workaholic, but it's something that uh, I'm, I'm having to learn to force myself to do because uh, a lesson that I learned in my business was that, okay, so I, I would work, you know, like three, four months straight without a day off. Well, the thing is, is I would get so exhausted from all the work that we were doing and everything else like that because we had to drive two hours uh, just to get into town and then we did a few hours worth of work and then we had to drive another two hours back. Our days were 12 and 16 hours you know, with, with, with no time to breathe. It's basically get home, lay your head down and go to sleep. Well, the thing is, is I would start getting injured, uh, you know, probably about a month in, month and a half in, uh, because I was so exhausted that you start losing functionality, you start losing some of your motor skills, okay? So, you know, if, if you don't take a, a little bit of time, I mean, work your butt off, work hard, but also have a moment to where you can sit back, take a deep breath, let the world slow down for a moment because if you don't, um, you're gonna burn yourself out. That was one of the things that, re that, that really was a negative effect in my cleaning business was that uh, I worked so much that, and I didn't get any time for myself. I didn't even get to enjoy the fruits of my labor to where it just, after, after probably about three years, so about halfway through it, 
I start getting, you know, burnt out and it's like, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm like, I'm ready to get out of the field. I'm ready to enjoy what I've spent, uh, you know, these last few years working very, very hard for. Okay. And so, you know, being able to take a little bit of time for yourself is probably uh, one of the most important things you can do, uh, not only for your mental health, but just for, for your body, just because I guess the way we're wired, you know, you can only work so much. And, you know, the, the more you work and the harder you work, sometimes the less effective and the less proficient you become. And so taking that day off is actually going to make you more money than if you just keep going to the grind every day because eventually you will have to pay the piper. Okay, so that's my second piece of random advice. Okay, my third piece of random advice is uh, you get used to having very little or having nothing. What is it that's really important to you? You know, what, what comforts do you, do you want and can you accommodate them? Can you carry them? Things like that. So should you ever become homeless? Should you ever become, uh, you know, go through SHTF or you go from homeless to housed? You know, do you really want to accumulate all this crap and all this junk and, and, and everything else like that? And so being able to live with very minimal, to, to have the things that are important to you, you have less, but it means more, okay? Because everything has a purpose, everything has a function, and uh, it's not just sitting there maybe used twice a year when you have guests over and things like that. There are, there are certain things, you know, if you're going to survive this future life, this future lifestyle, and I think our ancestors lived like this, and this is why, you know, they, they cherished uh, the things that they had and that they were content with what they had because the things that they had were important, they were meaningful, and they had a purpose and they were used regular enough to justify the storage space, to justify, you know, putting it on your back, carrying it around, you know, all those different things. But, you know, you gotta figure out, you, you're not gonna get very many creature comforts. It's not like you can, you know, there are some people that I've seen where they'll go out in the woods and they'll get one of those those big uh, canopies and then they'll put like a 10-man tent up and then they'll set it up and try and actually set themselves up with some sort of, of, of homestead or something like that. But the thing is, is that becomes way too much to manage. And if under, under some situation you have to move, like, you know, the river flooded here. If I was sleeping along the river like I usually do, I, I, I would be, you know, swimming down the river right about now okay so uh it, when when it comes to when it comes to the things that you have get used to having a little but making sure that it is not not just functional but multifunctional multifaceted so that you can use it in in everyday scenarios uh and, and that way you you you're already used to it because I, I i'll tell you going out on trail you know and going from like a regular diet to going to um, you know, rice and stuff like that. Going to the rice was really hard because, you know, I, I hadn't gotten used to it. Uh, it took me a while to get used to it. And I like rice, but I, I don't like, um, uh, I just don't like eating rice all day, every day. Okay, but sometimes that's a necessity. And so if you get yourself acclimated to it, get yourself used to it up front, when those times come, it, it won't even be a change for you because you've already learned how to live off of the minimal stuff that you really need. Because, you know, you could accumulate all this stuff, but when you die, can you take it with you? No. Okay, so why do you need all this crap? Okay, um, uh, you know, the, but anyways, that's, that's uh, I think that's number three right there. Number four is always have a hustle, okay? Some sort of hustle. When, when I was in Eugene, I, uh, I was trying to start Hobos for Hire and I actually had some backers and stuff like that, but that's how I found out how lazy people really were and that they really didn't want to work. And you know, I, I was asking, it's like, look, if I'm gonna get you the work, I want a $5 finder fee. You get to keep all the money except for $5. That's what I get for, for uh, you know, connecting you with the work. Oh no, da, 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 just, you know, I want money and you know, I don't want to have to da, 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 da. It's like, look, you're not even paying taxes on the damn thing, you know, but they, you know, people are people, okay? And 
So you know, I, I learned that you know you, you should always have a hustle. And so if I ever go back to Eugene, I got work. Uh, when if I ever go back to St. Augustine, I got work. You know because uh, whether you know in different regions have different ways to be able to make money. Like on the West Coast, uh, especially in California, you're going to want to use something like Craigslist. Okay, uh, or you're gonna want to use some, uh, some sort of bulletin board. Uh, on the West Coast, people use Craigslist for certain things, and they don't use it for other things. It's more prevalent in the Bay Area because that's where it started at, and like that—that that was like the main platform that I used living in in California was Craigslist. I did all my business on Craigslist. I bought, I sold, I marketed, uh, I found jobs, uh, all that stuff in in uh, in San Francisco. Because the thing is, is you you have you have something to contribute okay in, in the same way that they oh, like okay let's say your specialty is um, you've got a background in uh, in taxes and accounting okay so now you can go in there and you you can you can market yourself go into like a uh, uh, go into uh, like a chamber of commerce right you go into that chamber of commerce and you start networking with other small businesses and say, hey, look, I know you don't have a lot of work, but for, you know, like $100 a month, I will I will sit there and I will do your books. I have the experience doing it. I did it in the workforce for this many years, da, 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 da. So now you have your own hustle. The jobs in which you did uh, in, in, uh, in a, uh, the workforce, uh, some a lot of those jobs are translated over into uh, into being self-employed yourself. Okay, uh, in, in the sense that you could take you could take that skill set that you learn. Just like I learned janitorial, they're always going uh, when 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 it comes to cleaning, they're always going to need uh, buildings and commercial buildings and houses will always need assistance in cleaning, even if it's just a, a, a once a year deep clean just to reset the house. You know, you, you want to bring some professionals in that are going to do it because, you know, you're tired of doing it. Uh, in some ways, it's a luxury, but in other ways, everybody, you're always going to have a market for it. There's always, there's actually an undersaturation of cleaners, which I still find to be weird, you know, as far as the, the need versus, uh, you know, but the thing is, is most cleaners cost a lot. I did not. Uh, my prices were so reasonable. I was charging a third of what my, of what Molly mates charged, and I was getting work all day long and still making plenty of money. I wasn't greedy. Okay, so you can go and you can you can always find a hustle, um, and it's just use the skill sets that you have on hand. Figure out where it can be used and how you can market yourself to that to that uh, group. If you get good at doing that, even doing that as like a side hustle. You know, to start with, if all of a sudden your job goes away, your job gets automated, your job gets given to an immigrant, you now at least have the skill set of, okay, they're still going to need, uh, you know, there, there's still a need for this. Uh, you're just going to do it for the small businesses that aren't going to be hiring these, you know, because it's going to be the large corporations that are going to do this. And so it's going to be the super small businesses like the mom and pop shops uh, and, and stuff like that. And that what it'll end up doing is, is it will bring back the if if enough people started side hustles with what they already know with their skill set you know as long as it's not serving fast food or something i mean you can go do uber but um you know anyways so uh, just number four is just always figure out a way to find a hustle um that way you don't have to beg on a street corner see most most homeless actually have some sort of hustle whether it be you know hustling you out of money uh, or or hustling up uh, you know middlemaning things or whatever, but you know every homeless person has a hustle, okay, uh, and some hustles are better than others, okay. So always have a hustle. Okay, number five is be careful with you know those that you associate with now this doesn't mean that you don't associate with anybody don't go from one extreme to the other okay that's just stupid uh and it's going to be counterproductive no what i'm talking about is that people have their limits they have their issues they have the things that are going on they have the stressors you know you also have drama and you have you know community bs and all this other stuff that you have to deal with okay that's one thing uh and and you know 
people that were your friends will no longer be your friends or you guys will be mad at each other but you still say hi to each other and still be civil but you're never going to hang out again you know i've got people that i've met like that it's like the guy keeps trying to get me to apologize to him and i'm like i'm not apologizing to you for telling you no uh you know and, and instead of yeah he didn't like it that I told him no. He thought he was entitled to something I had. And, you know, he keeps wanting me to apologize for it. And I, I won't. But we still have, you know, civil conversations. Yeah, you know, I have, you know, people like Puckett. You know, I knew that he was, that, that he had my back. Because uh, when when there was a that bunch of drama, when the, when the girl that I was dating her and I broke up. And she started, you know, saying stuff that wasn't true. Uh, and, and trying to, uh, you know, create some drama. Uh, the one person that came to my defense was Puckett. Uh, he was the only one that defended me out of all of my friends. Well, him and, um, and Moana. Uh, those were the only two people because they knew me. They, they knew me well enough to know that, that she was full of it and that it, it wasn't true. And so therefore, you know, having people like that, those are the people that you call family. Those are the people that you call friends because those are the people that know you and know what you're capable of and what you're, what you, what you do and what you don't do. Okay. And if you do something that, you know, if you actually do something, you screw it up. Well, you know, you may lose a friend too. Okay. But those who know you, um, those will be the ones that, uh, that, that have your back. And that's how you tell who your real family is and uh who's all the superficial okay so you know just have su uh, surface level conversations with people and you know because one day you may need to ask them a, 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 an important question because they may know where something is that you're looking for and you know that's why you want to be able to communicate within the homeless within the homeless population you want to be nice you want to be cordial you you you, you don't want to rock the boat because you know, one day you're going to need something and these people are going to have access or information to it. And if you're a dick, well, then they're going to be a dick to you. Okay. So, um, it's, it's, you get what you give. All right. And so I, that's, that's why I, I have the, the philosophies and the, the way that I live my life. That's why I do it this way. Okay. So these are five pieces of random advice that I think is very important if you were ever to not be homeless or just life advice in general as far as things that i've learned you know getting on and off the streets as many times as i have so anyways guys thanks for watching and i will see you in next week's hobo tutorials